Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to the weekend preview. What a cracker game that was. I finished work and got home sort of halfway through the third quarter and phew, the Blues, the Blues look like they're the real deal. Who would have thought? Those Blue Bagger supporters, they'll be up and about. It was a good night. Charlie Kernow on fire, Mackay going nuts and the big dogs in the midfield just leading the way. Walsh just returns, just has a lazy 34 piece of cake. So... Very exciting stuff, and we've got a lot on our plates as well. Thursday night footy, hopefully everything's going well with your side. You know, Cripps was great, McRae was great. I think Dunkley was pretty solid. I think English was good. I think Trelaw was good. I haven't looked at the scores yet, but look, it, it looked like it was all guns blazing for us in Supercoach, and Hewitt looked like he had a fair bit of the pill as well. So very good stuff. Now, look, today we're going to just cover off on everything that you need to know before this weekend and a round of footy but before i get into it just hold your horses just stop trading i'm hearing in the live session all these questions about should i trade this guy and particularly with premiums just cool your jets just run yourself a nice bath pour yourself a glass of wine just calm the fuck down <laughs> i mean how much more simple can i put it it's one round guys people talking about trading out jack Steele, max gorn down to jared witz holy moly we're going crazy. Round one, we spent three months doing all this planning, all this research to turf blokes after one week. Nah, come on. Look, we may well turf some of these guys, but give them a second chance. Oh, honestly, Chris will bounce back. Ridley, let's see what he does. Um, Steele, 100%, I reckon you want to hold on to him. The only thing I will say is I, I kind of get a more aggressive style of trading because we have 35, but just bear in mind, there's a reason we've got extras, and that's because it's going to get tough for us at times later in the year when guys are, are pulled out. We've already seen a few players miss through COVID. Nothing too brutal just yet. Probably Nick Martin's the only one, but there'll be weeks where it gets your side and, and you'll wish you didn't burn some of those trades early in the year. So, yeah, basically going to cover off on all that, have a look at the teams, but um, let's just have a walk down memory lane just uh, the past seven days, how short his life's been. I had a couple of people asking how the house party went last weekend, and you would have seen me struggling, coughing through the live session in, when I did my tips video, struggling. It knocked me about, guys. Oh, Shorty might be getting a bit old for this uh, drinking a few nights in a row game. Now, I went to Melbourne Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday for the Cats game. Ripper stuff. Didn't hit the drink all too hard. We just, you know, went to the casino, got absolutely rinsed in blackjack, just walked up with 70 bucks, and that was gone in about... 12 minutes the dealer just shredded me it was brutal but um yeah i was it was a bit brutal on the saturday night you know when you get the sense you're like i just need a quiet night to recoup but i had this ripper house party recouping was not an option so i'm on the train oh hang on a sec no we're doing coaches you got to take a coach a bloody bus direct to Wyndham. i thought oh how long could that take an hour took me an hour then we had to get a connecting train. I thought, oh, yeah, connecting, probably wait 10 or 15. No, nope, 35, 35 minutes. So, and I'm starving. I'm starving. And I'm also thinking, I need to get some food into me or Shorty's going to be struggling after a few Malibu and pineapple juices. So I, I get to Lara Station. The house party was in Lara, so I just jumped off there. They had a nice town and country. That's a pizza place for people who aren't quite aware. Bang, straight in, get me an Aussie. I'm smashing it on the walk. It was good stuff. Then my mates picked me up and were straight into it. So it was good fun. It was a good night. Nothing too crazy, but uh, no, nah, it was good fun. It was good fun. And then, yeah, the moral of that story, I have been cooked for the most part of the week. I've been copping the, the runny nose, the cough. Holy shit, I've been struggling, ladies and gentlemen. So feeling good now i'm primed i've got an engagement party this weekend so I've, I've got to get up for it shorty's a fitness test at the moment so now nah, we'll pull through though we'll pull through but uh that's enough ramble though i like to chuck in a little story every now and then you know we can't always talk hard and fast you know sort of super coach gotta break it up with a bit of light and shade you know what i mean so how's your team looking you're pretty happy at the moment you you're chopping and changing you're getting a little bit of cold feet out there Cool your jets. Cool your jets. I love all your questions. I really do. But there's no reason unless you've absolutely butchered something. But in terms of premiums, just give them a couple of weeks. We invest all this coin into them because they're good players. 
Give them time. Give them time. I looked at the teams earlier. Nothing too crazy. Um, I wonder if Bud will kick his thousandth tomorrow. That'll be saucy. Uh, oh, McInerney. That'll probably hurt a few. Lloyd comes back in, which I'm sure would be handy if some were sort of waiting around for that. Duncan comes back in. So let's hope, well, probably not from a Cats point of view, but from a super coach point of view, let's hope he just eases his way into it and we can pick him up nicely. I think the Crows, you know, I think a few may have still had Miller, but probably not too many. Saligo might have hurt a couple if you went that way with the rookie option. Um, Kruger comes in, could be an option. Let's wait and see how he goes. String is back in. That's good for a structure point of view, I guess, for the Bombers. And um, Baldwin might hurt a few. Nick Martin, that hurts in the short term, but he'll be back. Mead getting dropped, that definitely hurts. But I think in return, the Port Power give us Sin and Skinner, which I think will definitely help some in the short term. But I think certainly from a Skinner point of view, could prove really handy for us, um, hopefully in three weeks, because Lear Lear is out for, I think, 8 to 10 not sure too many would have gone with Max Lynch, but he would be uh, hurting your side if you did. And uh, otherwise, look, I think we're sort of working into Sunday now, which obviously extended benches. West Coast going absolutely crazy there. Bloody, who the hell's Declan Mountford? <laughs> who the f who's that? Jack Darling's back, a bit earlier than anticipated. Where's Huey Dixon in terms of the team? Is he on the extended bench? Oh, no, centre half forward. Cherry, name number one, Ruck. It's the little things sometimes. Don't mind that. Um, anything we have to be worried about, extended bench style. Anyone who went with Nash would be just Hoff. That's probably one that we'll just wait and see this time tomorrow. How that's all shaping up. Bruce obviously comes into the lineup. That's something interesting for a few of you out there. Nothing too much for the Tigers, and I think Brody might be on the extended bench, but I'm sure he'll come through. Yeah, so he's on the extended bench, Heath Chapman's extended bench, and O'Driscoll. So that's interesting. As for the Saints, you know, um, I thought... Oh, yeah, Nasiah Wangadim Malira. Have a look at that. Did he play last week, or have they just not got him in? Am I missing something? Anyway, anyways, so uh, yeah, let's jump over to the Supercoach point of view. I, I normally do the weekend preview in front of me camera, you know, tripod style, just shorty on the camera, but I feel like people sort of enjoy this more and it's a better mic quality, so yeah, but uh, here's how shorty's team sort of shaping up. Nothing too crazy happening last week. Might have to bring Jack Hayes into the team. See how we go. Oh, look at Patwa, 162. I'll take that little VC from McRae. Thanks, Daddy. That's nice and saucy. In you come, Sam. Bang. Little emergency, little loophole style. Nice. Nice little uh, loophole there for you guys who uh, might not be aware. We love a bit of a vice-captaincy loophole here at Shorty Supercoach. Not everyone's cup of tea is at Jack Watson, but... Uh, Dunkley was just solid, nothing too crazy. And Durden, look, I was even looking to shake it right up with an emergency loophole if Durden went well. Couldn't find it tonight. I was listening to it on the radio in the in the truck when I was delivering, and it's hard to tell on the radio, but I was like, gee, I've barely heard him. And sometimes you like you, you actually check the stats, you're like, oh, he's actually had a bit of it. I must have just been in and out of the car. But tonight was not that. He had barely touched it. So that's a bit disappointing. Hopefully... You know, job security's not too bad, but the Blues are flying, so hopefully they don't change too much because they're looking good as gold. So, But um, let's jump into discussing a few of the points you guys asked and a few of the real hot topics about what we're doing ahead of this weekend. So, yeah, spare. it's going to be a bit of a late one, this uh, video release, but I figure it's better to have it out on the Thursday, I reckon, than sort of Friday morning or something. But hopefully it's, you know, hitting you guys nice and uh, in the sweet spot whenever you are watching this one. I will obviously need to have access to the teams to these videos, so they might more often than not be late on a Thursday because I do work every Thursday, so... That's a bit inconvenient, but nonetheless, um, I took some, I swear I took some notes. Did it just delete it? I took some notes the other day, and I had to restart my computer, so they might not be there. Well, that's great. Good preparation, Shorty. Nice. 
basically the main points of conjecture were the likes of Crisp, Ridley, Steele, Whitfield. Actually, Whitfield was named, wasn't he? That's that's good because there was talk that he. I totally forgot that when I was going through the teams. What have I done here? What am I doing? You guys are probably thinking, what the hell has Shorty done? What have I done? Where is, did I just miss something? Am I losing my mind? I think I'm losing my mind. There they are. Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> you guys are probably sitting there going, uh, Shorty, you've just scrolled past it. Oh, yep, you scrolled past it twice. Nice. I was looking for the big orange and it's just, yeah, anyway, it's been a long day at work. Big day at work. I had a reload, which basically means you have to go back and get some more, which is a bit of a stitch up. And I knew I was in for a long day. And, and sometimes just walking into a long day, you, you don't want to know how long it is. You know, I'd seen that I had a reload. So I was like, okay, we're in for a big one today. Fair enough. But sometimes it's just, sometimes it's hard when you're like, you, you know exactly when you're finishing. It's like, oh, that's nine hours. Brutal. So I was like, I won't look at my finish time. They give you like an estimated finish for your run. I was like, I won't look at it. I'll just deal with the first four hours, get through it. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe it's not as bad as it seems. I'm walking in, old mate's there. Hey, mate, how you going? Yeah, good, mate. I'm like, oh, you, you got a busy day? Nah, not as busy as you, mate. Cool. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Cheers, was trying to avoid that. Anyway, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Where was I? Um, yeah, main points were about premiums and just us getting real concerns over our premiums. And let's not be concerned if, if the similar thing happens tomorrow and over the weekend, I should say, like in round two, let's get concerned then. But Crisp was one of the most consistent players last year. He That was his lowest score since I think round 12, 2020. He'll bounce back. Ridley, yeah, okay, that was a bit concerning. Did play 20-odd minutes at full forward, got one touch. So, you know, I think we can be better for the run there. He is a very good player as well. Average great numbers the last couple of years. So let's back him in. Whitfield, I'm backing him in, one of my favourites. And, and same with Steele. No reason to be thinking of trading him out. Like I said, the only sort of reason I could say you would is because we do have lots of trades and you think you can pick him up cheaper in like a month. But... Trust me, you just don't know where your side's going to be at in a month. And you might have bigger fish to fry. It might not line up how you would like. You might come out and score 170, and it doesn't matter. It's also worth keeping in mind that round two, in theory, is always better to score better in round than round one because it's a price rises go off a three-game rolling average. So say Jack Hayes, you know, that big score, he'll only get one price rise from that score. Where if you get a big score in round two, I know it's only a little thing, but you'll actually benefit two price rises from that. So in theory, to kick start the rookies, it's it's often nicer to get a really good score in round two. So um, or or their second game in say Nick Martin's case, but yeah, and and look, a lot of people sort of talking about Raul and Barry. I was never a massive fan with Barry. And the shoulders, a bit of concern too. So I, I'd be leaning towards getting rid of him. But even still, you did all that research. So back yourself in. Give him one more week. Let's see what happens. Let's get two games of a sample and evaluate it from there. That's pretty much been my advice to anyone trading anyone. Um, I think Raul, I do think you're going to have to find a way to get him in. He looked irresistible. What I would say is... <laughs> Don't burn your side to get him in. Like, Don't throw so much around just to get him in and it overall hinders you. I had someone sort of say, oh, I think if I use three trades, I can bring him in. Nah, I think that's... Look, he's going to be a gun. Off one game, is it worth throwing that much around? Let's just see what happens this week. I do think we're probably going to want to find a way to get him into the team. But throwing the baby out with the bathwater and going crazy might not be your go. Jared Witts was super impressive. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens this weekend. you got Gorn versus Witts. So that would be a really good indicator because a few people were like, shit, should I trade Gorn for for Witts? You know, get that cash and that type of thing. Well, they'll pin each other 
straight up against one another and see what happens. So that'll be really interesting. Um, there were a couple of... There was one other thing. I think there was one other thing you guys mentioning, but look, basically, my train of thought is, is you know, you just back in what you did three months of research for. You know, we, we don't need to get too crazy. I had people saying they scored 2,400 and were, were ranked like in the top five or 100 or 1,000. So I'm ranked at about 45,000 or something. So, okay, it doesn't look good on paper, but what it also says is how close it is. That's 200 points that's worth about 40-something thousand rankings. So don't get too concerned about where you're ranked in the first two or three weeks. Just try to avoid injury. Make sure you got the right rookies after round two because prices begin to change in round um, in the third game, as we well know. Um, and look, in terms of on-field rookies, it's a bit of rookie lotto. It really is tough to predict. I'm backing in Josh Ward. I'm going to keep him on the field. Might just whack Dill Stevens as the emergency. And, and um, you know, I, I think I think otherwise I'm feeling really comfortable with my team. Um, I think, you know, it's very likely that Jack Hayes comes in for Hugh Dixon. But once again, we're, we're just going to see what round two brings us. I really do think that it's it's a time to just sit on your hands and just enjoy the footy. We had a cracker game tonight. We'll have a cracker game tomorrow. And let's just soak it up and see what happens. So I, I'm a big believer in, yeah, we got 35 trades, but they go quick and they'll go quicker this year because we'll have times where we get decimated by who knows what isolation types of things could come up and when your squad does get hit. So... Yeah, I think it's just important to, to stay focused at that. And we might use three trades next week. But I think that'll be a bunch of rookie corrections and, and maybe you might go Crips or Rowell or something like that or George Hewitt to free up some coin to help you out elsewhere. But I reckon we cross that bridge next week. So that's about all I wanted to talk about tonight. Um I wonder if Lukey Beveridge has had his press conference yet. I was very keen to see that, see what sort of a mood he was in. But, um, no, nah, good night all round, I think. A great game of footy. Plenty of points being scored by the most uh, popular sort of players in our game. So if you've got any questions, any comments, feel free to uh, message me below and leave a little comment. I'll look to get around to as many as I can tomorrow before I sort of get stuck into... Um, get stuck in the big game of footy actually before i will say i'm actually going for a little swim tomorrow um doing a little laps for life so um i will just chuck a little link in below it's um great internet here at uh, shorty supercoach but yeah just um obviously i haven't got too much of a donation but our, our team is actually going quite well where's my team there it is um most people just sort of donate to the team so We've raised our goal, which is great, but this all goes to youth mental health, which I'm really passionate about. Obviously, um, always have been, but studying youth work has sort of brought that to the fore. So we're swimming laps throughout March. Um, honestly, if you just, you know, you've got five or ten bucks, it, it does all count. So um, if you feel inclined, it'd be much appreciated, but I just wanted to give that a little bit of a plug. And um, yeah, going to gonna get the old backstroke on tomorrow. So it should be a bit of fun. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.